Okay, so we're almost done. Just one more thing to do here. And again, let's make another new level. Well, we can get away with... I think we can get away with not making a level here. So we'll, we'll just stick with this main profile. So what we're going to do next is the wheel well uh, little flares over here. So with that, I'm going to do a curve on edge first. And just click the edges of this wheel well. Same thing over here. I'm only going to do this on one side of the car. I'm not going to do it on the other side because I'm going to completely do this operation on this side and then translate that geometry over to that side. So we're going to offset again like we did previous. I'm still in the right plane. Keep that in mind. Offset chains. This guy. And click OK. Indicate the offset direction. And I'm only going to do a 50 thou offset here. I do want to come down here and uncheck modify fillet corners. See how these are rounding off with the um, with the function here? I'm going to uncheck that to keep those nice and sharp. Uh, I want to be set to a copy as well. I want to make sure I keep both the inside and outside geometry. Blue check. So I'm going to do the same thing again over here. And we're good, green check. So next, I just need to close these pieces of geometry off. So let's do curve on one edge to make that line there, that line there, that line there. And then let's just clean up some geometry. Divide, get rid of that, get rid of that. And then here, let's do trim two, this guy to there. And then we lost that geometry there, so we'll have to redo that edge curve there. Trim two again, this guy to that guy. I guess there's one thing I should point out there. When you're doing your trim two, you might run into problems. Uh, watch my cursor. The difference between that and that. So the difference between this and this is probably going to affect your results. This right now is selecting a line. That is selecting the wireframe. So when you're doing this trim too, make sure you're selecting the wireframe, not the edge. So typically when you come towards a piece of wireframe that's on an edge, it will first highlight as the wireframe. Then if you move more, it will highlight as the edge. So make sure you get the wireframe and the wireframe. Okay, so that was a lot to deal with. Clear colors. Let's translate this stuff to the opposite side. Transform, translate. Hold down my shift key. Select all that. Still holding shift. Select all that. And selection. And we're going to do a translate that's going to use vector from to. So I'm going to do reselect. And basically pick any point on this side of the car, like that, that you can correlate on the opposite side of the car such as that. And now we have geometry on both sides of the car. And with that, we can do our extrude. So we're going to do an extrude. We should be able to get all of these done in one operation. So let's select all that geometry and hit OK. OK, so that's for some really wide tires, which <laughs> we're not going quite that big. So uncheck both directions. We are doing an add boss. As far as the distance goes, we're just going to go with 50 thou. Oh, since they're, okay, yeah, we will need to leave both directions checked. My mistake. Um, it is going to extrude into the car, but that's okay. As long as it extrudes out on both sides. Okay, green check. Let's make level 20 our main level, and let's turn off the wireframe geometry. We've got one more step here, and that's adding some chamfers in here. So with that wireframe turned off, it's going to make things a lot more clear for us. So in our chamfer options here, we're going to do a one distance chamfer. Select what you want to chamfer, and what we're going to chamfer is these inside edges. So you do need to take some care in selection that you only select the inside edges. Uh, 
And we'll do it on both sides of the car. Okay, with that, let's green check. Now, our chamfer size, obviously, 1 8 is going to give us an error because there's not enough room for a 1 8 chamfer to fit in there. But we're going to make it the same size as our extrude, which was 50 thou. So 50 thou, and there's our nice chamfers on our wheel wells. I'm going to do a blue check because I'm going to do one more chamfer, and that's a chamfer on these front corners, that guy there, and that one there as well. And we can only get so big with these uh, because if this chamfer runs into this, it will air out again. So I think the biggest we can get here is about... About 120 thou before things become an issue with these two surfaces. Uh, well, I think it's big enough anyway, so 120, green check. And there is our finished Tesla Cybertruck. So as mentioned, the tires would be a whole other video in itself, so we're not going through tires today, but there's a simple model all, all done up. Um, if you want to get fancy now, you can start changing faces and, and colors. If that's something that you want to do, what I would suggest that you do is make a copy of this solid. So on the solids tab, notice this solid has got all this history in it of all the things that we've done that you can go in and do some minor tweaks to, or major if you want. Uh, but if you want to get into some really uh, funky manipulations of the model, uh, model prep is going to work good for that, and you don't want to model prep on this guy. So what I'm going to do, or suggest you do, is make another new level. Let's go with level 21. Call this uh, a solid copy, and let's highlight our solid, right click, copy it to our active level 21. So now over on our solids tab, uh, we've got two solids. So what I'm going to do on the levels, make sure level 20 is turned off. That's our good solid with all its history. Is this guy now, I'm going to go to model prep and click on Remove History. So now we head back to the Solids tab. Notice this solid now is just a body. So this is what we call a, a dumb solid. Uh, so it's dumb because there's no history uh, or there's no record of what's been done to create it. The advantage of that with this dumb solid is on our model prep, we can start doing push and pull on certain things. So we can grab this face here if I turn on face selection, that is. And you can push and pull features and modify this model as you see fit um, based on what you want out of the part. Maybe you want a, a deeper window or this one to be higher or this face to be angled differently. So all these model prep functions can now be done on this dumb solid without ruining all this stuff that you've done before. And you still have that original good copy. Uh, with that as well, you can get into some of these face colors. You can maybe Grab these faces here and let's make them uh, light blue. Maybe you want to make uh, the wheels, maybe these guys are here, you want to make those. Make those black. All sorts of fancy stuff you can do now. So we'll leave this model creation done now. I think we wrapped it up. Um, we may look at doing the tires in another video. But one thing I wanted to touch on is a plan that I've got for myself as far as, you know, doing something with this model here. And uh, not only we're, we're going to machine it afterwards on the, on the Haas UMC 750, uh, we'll also make a copy of this guy uh, on, the, uh, on one of the Haas VMs, maybe a VM2, VM3, a three-axis machine. I'm also going to print one off uh, on the 3D printer, full scale. I've printed off some half scales, and they look kind of cool. But I'm going to print one off full scale, and... I'm going to print one off that's been modified slightly. And what I'm going to do in the back end of it is print off two little holders for some CO2 canisters. Uh, so basically what we're going to do here is make a little rocket car. So Tesla, you know, Elon is part owner of uh, SpaceX. So we're going to take this, this cyber truck and see if we can uh, rocket propel it and see how fast we can make it go. So a lot of uh, high schools and even colleges, they'll, they'll make up those CO2 cars. Uh, and, and make them into little dragsters and, and race them and stuff. So we'll print this off 3D, throw a couple of CO2 canisters in the back, uh, make, up, make up some sort of firing mechanism that uh, ignites hopefully both of these at the same time, and we'll see, what, we'll see what happens to it. I think it should be uh, 
pretty fun. So keep an eye out for that one in the future. And uh, uh, maybe if you want, you can try printing one off yourself and see if you can make a rocket-propelled Tesla Cybertruck <laughs> yourselves.